Conditional probability. Conditional probability. I mean, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's probability under specific conditions. I'm going to give you the formula. P of B, this is a vertical line A, is equal to P of A and B divided by P of A. Um, you know, what the heck does that mean? So conditional probability. So this notation here states the probability of event B given event A. What does that mean? It represents the probability of event B occurring under the condition or given that event A has already occurred. So conditional probability, right? Um, the probability that some event occurs based on the fact that another event has already occurred. So that changes um, some things. So, you know, if you're using the formula, the probability of B given A. So this part after the vertical line, this vertical line is read as given. It's not a fraction bar, it's a vertical line. Probability of B given A. Um, this is always the event that has already occurred. Okay, so after the given line, this event, this is the one that has already occurred. And the event here before the line is the event that is occurring after. So this is the event occurring after this event, which means, you know, the denominator here is always affected by this event that has already occurred. The numerator here, the probability of both occurring, given that this has occurred. So the intersection over this that has already occurred. That's what this is doing. Um, now, a nice way to visualize this is with a table first. So I'm going to, um, you know, extend this table. We'll get all the pieces to this table. So we have 50 total subjects that use. I'm sure I used this table before. Um, I have 505 total subjects that, ha that do not use. So 555 total people. There's 45 um, that had a negative test result. <clears throat> and 70 that had a positive test result. So let's um, randomly select one, one person or one subject from this table. Okay, only one. Find the probability that this person uses drugs given that they had a positive result. Now that might sound confusing, but don't forget that a positive result does not imply, or do, I mean implies, a positive result does not mean that they actually use drugs. There could be a false positive result. A false positive result is a positive result, which implies that you use a drug, but you may not use it. So don't confuse positive results and using. So what is the probability that somebody randomly selected uses this drug given under the condition that they had a positive result? So I'm going to do this um, just kind of uh, based on just like uh, common sense kind of thing, intu intuition. And then I I'll do it with the formula and show you how it's the same thing. Let's start with um, the intuition. So um, in other words... I'm going to write this out for you guys. In other words, let's not. Um, Jesus. <laughs> In other words, <laughs> find the probability of randomly selecting someone. I'm writing this in my handwriting, but randomly selecting someone instead of typing it um, who uses out of the positive test results find the probability of randomly selecting someone who uses out of the positive test result out of given the positive test results out of positive results how many total positives out of 70 when I have conditional probability is now changing my total. It is not out of the total 555. It is out of positive results. This is my initial case, right? This is what has already happened. I'm already dealing with positive results. I'm not dealing with anything but that. Out of these, 
how many use. So now I'm only using this column. Out of these, how many use? Out of 70, 45 use. So the probability that I'm randomly select one person and that person uses given that they had a positive result is 45 out of 70. And then you can convert that to decimal and all that. Okay, so again, this vertical line implies given. It says conditional probability. Under this condition, then this. After this, then this. Out of this, then this. So, you know, you can always say, well, this affects the denominator. Out of this many, then how many of these? I'm, I'm not dealing with the ones that use, that have negative results. Out of positive results, how many use? So, let me do it with... Um, the formula so you know how to use that also just in case I mean um, so the formula says probability of B given a probability of a and B probability of the intersection so probability that they use and have a positive result probability of the intersection over the probability of a, the probability of what has already occurred, the probability that they had a positive result. Okay, following the formula. So what is the probability that they use and had a positive result? The probability that they use and, and the intersection had a positive result, 45, use and had a positive result. 45 out of the total 555, use and had a positive result. In general out of or over the probability that they had a positive result. What is the probability they had a positive result? Well, there's 70 total positives out of 555. This is the long version of doing the same thing that I just did because now I'm going to do 45 out of 555 divided by 70 out of 555. And then when I'm dividing fractions, what do I do? I keep the first, I flip the second, and I change the multiplication. So 45 out of 70. Okay, so I got the same thing using the formula as I did just intuitively. Okay, so let me do one more. Um, again, I'm going to randomly select one subject, and I want the probability that that one person um, had a negative test result given that they used this drug. So again, don't confuse negative results with using, okay? A negative result implies that they don't use, but if it's a false negative, then they actually did use. So don't, you know, confuse negative results and using, or, you know what I mean? Positive and negative versus using and not using. Be careful. So I'm going to do it intuitively. So I'm going to say, well, in other words, find the probability that I randomly select someone out of the number that use who had a negative result. Out of the number that use, how many total use? Well, we said here is the total that use, 50 total use. That changes my denominator here. I'm not using the formula. I'm just going through this based on intuition. Out of the ones that use, how many had a negative result? Out of the ones that use, 50 total use, five of them had a negative result. Five out of 50 is the probability of me selecting one and that person had a negative result given that they use. I'm just going to do, let me do one more. Find the probability that I randomly choose someone and they had a positive result given that they use. Um, out of the people that use, how many had a positive result? Out of the people that use, how many had a positive result? 45. These are called, you know, complementary events because they add up to 1 or 100 percent. But do not confuse this, right? This notation is not a fraction. This is given, right? This implies given. It's a vertical line. Find the probability that I have a positive result given that I use is not the reciprocal of the probability that I use given that I had a positive result. They're not reciprocals, okay? If I flip this, this is a number greater than 1. That doesn't make sense for probability. Out of the ones that have positive results, now how many have total positive results? 70. Out of the positive results, how many use? 45. Okay? Do not confuse, you know, even though these are flipped, these don't get flipped. So just be careful. That in vertical line implies given. It's called conditional probability. Um, out of this, how many this? Okay? 